Hey guys, Kyle here, ClassForDespairs.com, and today we have a new video that we would like to show you. We're going to be fly cutting a Triumph Cylinder base gasket surface. So typically this job has to be employed when you have two crankcase halves that are higher than the other. So in this particular instance, we have two crankcase halves that are matching, but there is a lip, and the only way to remove the lip is the fly cut. So if you guys are interested in learning a little bit more about how to do this, stay tuned for the rest of the video. All right, first things first, and perhaps maybe the funnest part of the video, we get to do some coloring. So we're gonna grab our blue Sharpie, or magic marker, and we're gonna color the entire cylinder base gasket surface. And the reason why we wanna do this is because as we start to fly cut the surface, uh, the blue marker is gonna show us the high and the low spots, and it will also tell us when everything is essentially blended in or the material has been removed uh, evenly. So we start off with this, then we'll move over to the next step. Considering that I have a vertical mill, sometimes it does pose as challenges, especially mounting the crankcase. Uh, I personally think a horizontal mill would definitely be a lot easier, uh, but this is what I have to work with. So I decided to use my right angle plate that I recently had Blanchard ground. So I know and I feel confident that this plate is flat, but we're gonna do some checking prior uh, to mounting the crankcase to the fixture. So now that we have the plate in a general area where we're going to use it, now we have to indicate the plate. Um, the reason why I decided to indicate the plate, and honestly, it's not necessary for what I'm doing right now is what you see, um, but the crankcase has a shoulder, and the only way to follow that shoulder is to simply indicate the plate. So we're going to try to get it to zero as close as we possibly can. Now, what's really important is we need to check the travel up and down of the plate. If the plate has any taper or it's skewed, we need to correct that by shimming it. And so luckily, like I said earlier, since I had it Blanchard ground, uh, the machine shop that did the work did a really nice job. So I'm using the Z axis to go up and down on the travel to make sure it's at zero. The reason why I didn't use a quill is sometimes there is rock or movement in the quill and it will throw your dimension off. So considering as low as I possibly can go, I'm very happy with that dimension. Here is some of the hardware that I'll be using to mount the crankcase assembly to the right angle plate. Now off camera, I did struggle with coming up with a different idea to be able to mount the crankcase to the plate without distortion. Uh, but honestly, the easiest way that I found is to simply take the all thread rod, go through the crank bushing and the drive side roller bearing and simply clamp it together. So now that we have the crankcase bolted to the angle plate, um, I will say that it is not tight. It is somewhat snug, so we can make some final adjustments. But first we're gonna use our Fowler digital level. Uh, this level is very accurate, but it's gonna get us very close to where we need to be. Um, so it is not the solution as far as zeroing out uh, the crankcase and making sure that it's uh, level to the table. So we're gonna get it to zero. Right underneath the uh, digital level, you might see that I have a ground flat bar um, that is basically sitting on top of the base gasket surface um, so we can find zero and uh, it's gonna help us along the way. So right now I'm kind of going back and forth, kind of teeter-tottering the entire case. Once I find zero, we snug it up until we get our indicator so we can actually take some more dimensions. Uh, the crankcase is sitting maybe a quarter inch higher than the table so we can account for adjust adjustment or movement uh, from one side to the other. So if we're high in one area or low in one area, uh, as you can see what I'm doing with the mallet here, we can kind of go back and forth. Now, according to the digital level, it's showing that the crankcase is at zero, but we're gonna install our Mitutoyo test indicator, and we're gonna make sure it's zero from one side or the other. So this is a good way to test how accurate the uh, digital level is. And usually it could be anywhere about five to six thousands off. So I have my mallet here, and we wanna make sure that it's zero in one spot and also zero on the other. So um, if we don't have zero, then we have to make adjustments. Uh, right now, I'm just checking again that we have zero on all flats, both sides, including the timing side and drive side. Okay, guys, so I have a printout here, and uh, I wanted to show you a little bit more in detail uh, as far as the process and the steps that I'm taking uh, before I fly cut the base gasket surface. So it's really important that this surface here um, is going to be parallel with the center line of the crank bushing and the crank bearing. Um, obviously, over, over time, crankcases become distorted. Um, sometimes crankcases get changed from one side versus the other. Fortunately, these two halves are matching set, assuming that the, num the numbers do match, but assuming that they are legit numbers, uh, the, the cases do match. So basically what I've done here is I have my angle plate here. I've had this Blanchard ground. I went ahead and made sure that this 
area here is uh, perpendicular to the table. And the reason why is because when I fly cut uh, this corner here, uh, I need to make sure that it's going to be straight. And doing so, uh, I can make sure that this plate is going to be perpendicular. So that was reason number one on that. Uh, the other thing here is checking up and down on the plate is really important because that can skew the uh, base surface there. So I went ahead and checked that. You guys saw that in the clips before. There's no issues there. So what I've done here is I installed a 7 thousandths brass shim at the bottom. Without this shim, I was getting 15 thousandths taper from this end to this end. 15 thousandths is a lot. Um, so one could assume, well, maybe the base gasket surface is no longer, or it's not perpendicular to the timing side gasket surface. Who knows? Um, me personally, since I already ground, or excuse me, uh, bored the crank bushing, you guys might have seen that in my other video, um, I would assume that the crankcase half is not parallel to the gasket surface here, and the base gasket surface is not perpendicular. So in other words, I believe the timing gasket surface is off, which is fine. So we're gonna make up for that with the 4,000 shim there. So the 4,000 shim there kicks it up enough to where we have zero here, and we have about a half a thousandths here. So everything's fine and dandy. The other thing that I went ahead and did, and I'm gonna draw this here because you guys can't see this. This will be the top of the base, and this will be, we'll split it in half, drive side, timing side. So this zero, half a thousandths, just like what we have here. So this is essentially the top view. So I get zero here, I get a half a thousandths there with the 7,000 shim there. I do understand that there's wear on different points, right? Where the two halves meet, there's usually wear there, and there's usually wear there, <coughs> excuse me, for distortion. So I get zero here, I get zero there. So we know from here to here, the case is level. We know from here to here, the case is flat, parallel to the table. The ultimate way, as I said before, would be to have a ground bar from one side to the other and actually take points. So that'd be the center line. That way it would be best to go off here and go off there, but actually mounting the crankcase to the angle plate becomes a challenge because there's really, or I wanna say no way, uh, but the only way that I found is to run a bar, which is this bar from one side to the other, and clamp it together. So I've already lapped this gasket surface here and everything is nice and flat, so there's no issues there. So anyways, this is what I've, what I've done to um, try to get the base gasket zero. I don't want to correct any problems, and the reason why is because the factory went ahead and machined this case. I'm gonna follow what they did. If I decide to go off this area here and there's a 15 thousandths dip and I try to correct that, then your cylinder, you know, your cylinder barrel is going to be off. It's going to be crooked. And then you're going to run into problems there. So the most logical way in my mind of thinking is, well, if the factory machined it, you know, parallel to the table, I guess you would want to say, or perpendicular, we need to be able to retain that. So if the 7,000 shim gets me from zero here and about zero there, then I'm going to roll with that. Then we can adjust the case from one side to the other, be able to get zero here and there. So anyways, it might sound like a little much, but these are the steps that I've taken prior. Like I said, I, I haven't done this before. I don't want to screw it up. And it's really important uh, that we, you know, make sure it's flat and we don't want to make sure that, the, you know, we don't want the barrel to be crooked. So there's a lot to go wrong here and uh, it would be very hard uh, to try to repair that. So Based off what I see here, the zeros that we have all the way around, I feel confident and comfortable uh, that we should be able to fly cut this and basically uh, mimic uh, what the factory has done. So we're essentially copying what they've done in this area here and we're not changing anything. So that's what we have at hand. I might use this fly cutter here, try to fly cut the case. This is a homemade fly cutter and uh, it's got a very sharp radius aluminum uh, insert here. So um, I'll have to, you know, put this in the collet in the spindle and we'll see what we have to work with. Um, the only concern about this area here is that it needs to be a 90 for this area here or else it's going to foul because we need to be able to fly cut all the way to the very, very edge. 
so the barrel can sit in that area. So anyways, uh, I will get back to the video and I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. We still have some more work to do. Thank you. All right, now that we got that out the way, I went ahead and zeroed on the timing side and we're going to move the table over to the drive side. And with the 7,000 shim, I get about a half a thousandth, which is very well. Then after that, we're gonna zero out from one side or the back side of the crankcase to the front side and we should be getting zero too. All right, so the moment that we have been waiting for, all of our work comes down to this. We have our fly cutter in place. Now off camera, I did have to grind a relief and also change the angle of the tool inside the holder to be able to grind all the way up to the timing side shoulder. So basically what we're gonna do here with the Z axis is touch off. Once we touch off, we're going to zero out uh, the Z axis so we can actually measure just how much material we took off in the entire process. Look closely on the side and see our machine shop inspector, Puppet Dog Milo, gave me a few tips so we can uh, execute this job. All right, so what you see here is a high spot. Uh, which is known because I've ran the indicator on all areas. So I was expecting a high spot there. So everything's looking good. Uh, we will raise the Z axis about one thousandths. So basically one thousandths each pass. And uh, we will keep going and see what we get. So now that we fly cut the entire base gasket surface, there are two spots that are a little low. So I have my test indicator on a one, two, three block to find out just how low the low spot is. Um, so I decided to take off one thousandths more, uh, which will give me six thousandths in total of the entire base gasket surface uh, material that I removed. Um, at this point, I don't personally think that it would be smart for me to remove another three or four thousandths only to remove the low spots. And the reason why is because 
the entire base gasket surface is flat now. Um, so you have plenty of area and contact area that the cylinder barrel will be making with the base gasket surface. So there shouldn't be any leaks at all. Um, so I just didn't think it would be wise to remove unnecessary material um, unless we absolutely have to. And in this case, we don't. So everything right now is looking really good. We're just going to try to get in that far corner uh, to be able to butt up against the shoulder so the entire barrel will sit down on the base gasket surface. All right, you guys, it is finished. We went ahead and fly cut the entire base gasket surface minus the two low spots. You might be able to see them there, um, but that is irrelevant as far as I'm concerned because about 95% of everything is complete. Uh, so in the next clip, I'm going to show you some uh, checking that I did to ensure that the base gasket um, is going to be parallel to the center line of the crankshaft and the camshaft. So this is really the most important step. All right, we're gonna check how flat this base gasket is just to make sure that it is flat and level so it's not skewed, it's not leaning from one side or the other. So we're gonna grab a pilot and we're gonna grab a reamer. We're also gonna use our Starrett depth gauge and we're going to go off the base gasket surface all the way down to the flat end of the reamer and we're going to record that dimension. That dimension comes out to about 0 0.875, 0 0.874. So we're checking one side and then we're gonna record that dimension. Then we're gonna check the other side. So essentially that will tell us if the base gasket is flat from one point to the other. So we're gonna take the entire assembly. We're gonna to go to the exhaust side. We're gonna get everything set up. Now, mind you, this is not the most accurate way to do it, but this is a way as far as I'm concerned to at least tell me where I am. All right, so off camera, I have about a 1,000th taper from the exhaust camshaft side to the inlet camshaft side. So I think that's very respectable. So what I'm gonna do right now is we're gonna measure the cylinder base gasket surface uh, in relation to the center line of the crank case or the crank shaft, I would say. So we're gonna use our telescopic gauge, measure the inside diameter of the um, timing side bushing. We're gonna divide that by two. That will tell us the center line. And then we're gonna use our caliper to measure the top of the base gasket surface to the inside diameter of the crank bushing. Once we have all those dimensions, we're gonna write everything down. Then we're gonna do the same thing to the drive, the drive side. The drive side, we're gonna use our telescopic gauge. We're gonna measure the inside diameter. We're gonna divide that by two. We're gonna record the dimension. Then we're gonna get our caliper and then we're gonna measure from the cylinder base gasket surface to the bore, record that dimension. And then we're going to find the difference between the two and that is gonna tell us the taper. So obviously the goal is to get zero, one thousandths, two thousandths. I think that would be fine. So we're gonna write everything down. We're gonna get our calculator out, do some math, and then we are going to show you what we have. All right, guys, let's get the drum roll going on right now. The numbers that I plugged in the phone from one side to the other, there is a three thousandths difference. And I think that is very, very respectable considering we went off the existing gasket surface. So we didn't have any ground bars or anything like that. So I'm very, very happy about that. Math doesn't lie. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this video. Uh, also, we sell motorcycle parts for Triumph, BSAs, and Norton. You can also check out our website, ClassicBritishSpares.com. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at Classic British Spares. If you guys are interested in any type of service from cylinder heads, boring, and things like that, feel free to send me an email to sales at classicbritishspares.com. I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season. And again, thank you so much for watching and all of your support.